Hey guys, welcome back. In uh, this section, I'm going to try and show you a few different things. We're going to go over loading sounds into a machine, showing you how the pads and the groups can work together, um, showing you loading different groups into different sounds, showing you the functions of mute, solo, and note repeat, and um, controlling your metronome and some other things. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so here we are back on our machine. If you've already been messing around for your machine, go ahead and go to File, and go to New, and let's just start with a new blank file. Um, we don't want anything in there yet. So once you've done that, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to be loading some sounds into uh, your machine. So you notice, um, with the machine, uh, the only pads that's lit up are the ones, the last one that I touch. That shows you that there's no sounds currently loaded in here. And same thing with my groups. There's nothing currently loaded into my groups. So since there's nothing currently loaded, once I go ahead and load something, all these pads will light up. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our um, thing here. You want to make sure that you've hit browse. Browse should be lit up because if it's not lit up, it's not going to show correctly. So go ahead and hit browse. So browse should be lit up. Once browse is lit up, you want to go ahead and select, make sure this is on, on group. So group is selected. We want to go ahead and turn the knob that's underneath your filter, this knob right here. And we want to turn that one to um till it reads group on the screen. So that screen should regroup. And we want to go ahead and turn the second one until it reads kits under bank. So go ahead and turn kits under bank. And as you're turning that, you're filtering the list here. So as I turn this, this list is actually filtering based on what I do on this screen. So select kits under bank. Um, and once you have kits selected, under type, go ahead and select urban kit. Because it's still thousands of sounds over here that we'll have to go through before we find the kit that we're going for. So we want to go ahead and filter that even more by urban kit. So once we have urban kit selected, now all we have showing in our screen with our sounds that it are our urban kits. So go ahead and take one of the knobs down here and turn it until we get to this kit in the E's that is EK-TLA kit. So this this kit that we're going to be loading. You want to make sure that this pattern right here isn't looking like that. And you don't want to check in pattern because if you do it's going to load its own pattern when you load the sound and we don't want that pattern. We'll go over that in a later video. So make sure that's unchecked and the light is not lit above it. And go ahead and hit the le very last light that says load. So hit that light and you'll see loading for a brief moment and it will load your pattern. And you'll also notice that all your pads are now lit, indicating that each pad has a sound in it. So now that all these pads are lit and has a sound in it, and all these lit pads are in group A. So if I wanted to load another sample, into group B. Once I select group B now, you notice that now A stays lit slightly, indicating that there's sounds currently loaded in it. So if I go to this kit, which you may not have, um, um, let me just load it. And the only reason I'm using this one is because it's just so different and you can hear the difference. Um, now I, you see if I select C, A and B stay lit because I have sounds in both A and B. But the sounds in B are dramatically different than the sounds in A. So, there's different sounds in A, which is splendid. Alright, so, now that we got that, we'll only be working with whatever's loaded in A, which should be the EKTL or ETKL, whatever it's called, kit. So, next thing I'm going to show you is working with your metronome and getting ready to record a simple pattern. Alright, so um, 
you may or may not want to record when you record with a metronome. But here's how you get the metronome started anyways in, um, in the uh, machine controller. So to do this, I'm trying not to create too much shadow here. Um, you want to go ahead and hit the play button. So go ahead and hit play. Once you hit play, play a light up. And after play is hit, hold down shift with one finger and press play with the other finger. Now you get the beat metronome. Now, I don't know if there's a way to change that beat. I've been looking for it, and everywhere I saw it implied that you gotta dive into the program and change some other things, and it just was too much work. But you can change the volume of it. Now, to change the volume of it, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but I'm gonna try and show it to you anyways. So to change the volume of the metronome only, and not affect the rest of their project, hold down shift, hold down play, and while you're holding those two, adjust the volume. So you see I turned the volume of the metronome down, or you can turn it up, whatever suits you best. Um, to change the tempo, of course, you just simply use the knob right next to volume, which is tempo. So that's adjusting the tempo. And if you want to see your tempo being adjusted in the screen, go ahead and... Um, hit the browse button so it's not lit up and then it actually shows you the tempo as you're adjusting it on the screen. You can see it changing there and right underneath master. So I actually like to keep mine at about um, 90 for what I'm about to do at least. Anyways, so that is how you control your metronome. Now we are going to go ahead and record a simple beat in this. Now we have our sounds loaded right all of our sounds loaded up um and we have we're using the sounds in bank a we're going to go ahead and record a simple beat in here now i'm only going to use two um drums to make this beat just because i want to keep it simple for the purposes of this tutorial so go ahead and hit record don't hit anything because now you're recording and anything you're going to hit is going to record if you hit something by accident that's in there in the sequence now. Okay. To undo that, hold down shift, and each time you hit the first pad while holding down shift, it's going to undo one step backwards. So this is the first drum I hit once. And now it's just that one in there. I'm gonna hit it again. Undo that other one. Okay. Now even though I hit shift and undo, it's still recording. So if I go back and do it again, it's going to record. I don't have to go back and hit record. It's still in record mode. You can undo while recording, it's going to keep recording. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a very very basic pattern in here. And because it's looping or repeating, I'm just going to layer it. So Now my timing on that first one was way off. So on that first um, little bass drum there, or well, on both of them actually, I'm going to quantize them. To quantize, I'm going to hold down shift and pad 5 which coincidentally is the pad that the drum is on. But if you look right above pad five, it says quantize. You remember when you hold shift, it does whatever it says above the pad, as long as you're holding shift. It's not actually going to record. So I hit quantize, and you see that it made that little drum there jump back to where it was supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little, uh, another a little snare sounding thing in there. Again, I'm way off, so I'm going to go ahead and hold shift and quantize. Now that I have a little rhythm in there, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my metronome because I don't need it anymore because I can use what's in there. So I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to hit play. So my metronome is off, but notice record is still on, so it's still recording. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off recording so I'm going to sample some of my sounds too. They sound like. Okay. I'm going to use this little thing right here to add that um, in there multiple times. So what is this? A hi-hat, right? Yeah, so I'm going to add the hi-hat in there a bunch of times. But I'm not going to go... I'm not going to do that because I don't want to. And I am. I will be way off and I need to go ahead and quantize it all. And it just doesn't make any sense for me. So the machine actually has a nice feature called Note Repeat. So Note Repeat is right here. If I hit Note Repeat, anything that I'm hitting while I'm holding down Note Repeat, 
will automatically do it on the beat that's currently selected. And the way that you select the current beat is you would change it up here on the screen. Now, I'm doing with this with a camera, and doing all that with one hand will be very, very difficult. Um, so, what I'm actually going to do with my screen saver, a quick coming on. Um, what I'm actually going to do is, and the reason my screen saver keeps coming on, by the way, is because I've been doing all of this from the machine control. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sticky that. So, I'm going to turn on note repeat. So, I'm going to hold that. And notice right here it says um, on the screen. So, you can see it says repeat. If, since it's like slightly lit like that, if I hold that down, it's actually going to sticky it. So, now I you know repeat is sticky on. So I don't have to hold it down anymore. So now, even since it's on, if I just hold this down, since no repeat is currently turned on now, it's going to record automatically. Now you see up in the screen up here, I have my options for where I want the beat to follow. So if I do it 1 16th of the beat, yeah, well, 1 32nd of the beat. So, but I like 1 8th, so that's what we're going to use for this beat. So I'm going ahead and hit record, and I wait for my beat to come around, and then I'm just going to start recording. Each note is individual, so the harder you hold it down, the higher the velocity is on it. So it's not like you hold it down once. So you got to make sure you keep your velocity at the same unless you're intentionally trying to change it. So I'm actually going to intentionally try and change it for each beat to make it go harder as it goes on. So that's what I ended up doing there. And, um, get the idea basically I want I can't let this video run on too long so I don't know what the time limits are on YouTube so sorry if this was rushed if you have questions on what I just showed you just let me know I'm gonna try and get one more thing in this video if I can um, which is showing you mute and soloing notes all right so in the last section there I showed you um, I was showing you note repeat and whatnot, and I showed you how sticky it on there. See my note repeat still lit. Just go ahead and hit that repeat to turn it back off. So now our note repeats off and it's no longer lit here. You can always you know hold it down, but if it's not sticky every time you let go of it, it's going to go off. Anyway, so what I'm gonna show you right now is just mute and solo it real quick. This is gonna be real quick. Okay, so this is the beat we just created in that last little section. Now if I hold down mute all my pads light up bright. Okay, now if I hit a pad, it's going to mute that pad. So, once I let go, you see that pad isn't lit at all because that pad's muted. Now that pad's still in the sequencer on the program, so if I unmute it, it's going to bring it back, okay? So, holding down mute, um, and if I can drop any sound I want, basically. Okay, now the same thing with solo. If I hit solo and I hit a pad, it's just going to bring in that one pad. So that's the only pad I have in there right now because it's solo. You see, if I let go of solo, they all go dark and only the one I have selected stays lit. If I go ahead and bring in that other one, um, well, actually, in order to, if I solo it, it's going to bring in the one pad. If I hold down mute after I solo it and bring them in one at a time, it's going to bring them in like that. So that's one way you can control your sounds. Now if I hit solo and I hit any pad twice, it's going to bring them all back. And this is all also reflected on the screen up here. As I'm hitting solo, that's soloing them all out. That's bringing them all back. If I'm hitting mute, you can see I'm picking individual different pads out the mix. And I can bring them back individually. So that's how solo and mute work. Um, you can use those in your music just to, um, you know, if you're doing like a live performance or anything like that, that helps with that. Really good tools to get creative with. Um, don't be afraid to just experiment a little and try them out. So um, next, we're going to be building out our rhythm a little bit and showing you a few other tricks with the machine. So let's move right along to the next video.